Not only have they accumulated massive success in South Korea, they've also been internationally recognized as one of the most popular K-pop groups by Time and Billboard magazines. Also, they're apparently a favorite of North Korea, or at least I assume based on how whipped they were for Irene. Mm. <laughs> 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 Red Velvet is a South Korean girl group with a five-member lineup consisting of Irene, Sugi, Wendy, Joy, and Yeti. Their name is reflected in their discography with a more poppy red side that tends to experiment with like electro pop and bubblegum K-pop, whereas their velvet side tends to experiment more so with ballads, R&B, and hip hop. Today, we are going to be breaking down and analyzing Red Velvet's fashion and styling throughout their Korean discography. And I'm kind of limiting it to the Korean discography because they have a lot of songs. <laughs> While I love outfit inspiration videos, I mean, I quite literally make my own. Sometimes it can feel a little disconnected in the way that, you know, not everyone is going to own the pieces that I own and vice versa. And so it can be easier to fall into sort of the cycle of overconsumption. Lately, I feel like the most helpful slash most stylish people in my eyes are the people who can explain why they put a fit together, they can't explain their reasoning behind an outfit. So instead of feeling like I need specific items in order to complete an outfit, I can instead take their general advice and apply it to my wardrobe instead. So I thought it would be fun to analyze and deep dive into some of my favorite fashion inspiration, whether that comes from music, TV shows, movies, other content creators, or fashion brands that I really like. I want to make a little series where I analyze and reflect why I think certain fits work, whereas others just fall flat for me. I mean, to be honest, I just really like talking about clothes and fashion. I mean, I quite literally make my own, so this is just my bread and butter. Also, I was going to come out with a crochet off-shoulder tutorial this week, but I actually ran out of yarn, and so it's taking a little longer than expected. Um, also, my hands just kind of needed a break, so expect that tutorial probably next week, I'm hoping. I would be completely lying to you if I said that I thought this was a well-styled concept. They're like very happy little crayons and I love that for them. And I do think it's quite refreshing in the way that they're really embracing the fun of youth and this like bold, bright concept. And this bold, bright concept is really there to reflect the message of the song. I just think that the outfits made no sense to me. To be fair, in 2014, fashion was like very heavily dictated by like flower crowns and mullet skirts and K-pop was definitely in its experimental era. So I can generally see what they're trying to do, but I just don't think that any of these outfits were particularly iconic or cohesive. I do however love that each member has their signature color dip dyed on the bottom of their hair. I thought that detail was really cute. Also, I think looking back on like particularly some of their stages, outfits that they were trying to create cohesion between the members by using the sock colors to like kind of match with other members but the sock colors didn't match properly so it ended up just kind of feeling like an afterthought honestly I think the best part of their styling for this track is their hair and also just leaning into like their individual colors honestly looking back like there's not a super memorable outfit from this era. The thing that I do remember are their uh, dip dyed hair. <laughs> SM likes to do this thing where they reuse old songs from like first generation of K-pop because when I first heard this song, I was like confused. <laughs> I was like, this sounds so familiar. And it is indeed a remake of the original by SES. Aesthetically, I like this concept a bit more in the way that it's sleek, it's sexy, it's fitted, it's girl boss. I mean, they're all in like very nicely tailored suits and killer heels. Yeti was also really embracing her mask side here. We love that for her. <laughs> I also thought that like coming out with Be Natural right after happiness was like such a great showcasing of range because like literally they said red and velvet 
just back to back. However, my biggest criticism is that while the suits are nice and they're well tailored and like I would love to own one of these suits, but for stage outfits, it just kind of falls flat for me. It's again, just not super iconic. It's not very eye catching. And I wish that there was just like a little bit more razzle dazzle in there. It also just generally lacks any sort of individual flavor for individual members. And it just doesn't tell you much about them as a group or as individuals. Like honestly, they just kind of look like backup dancers for Yeti and like talk about favoritism, am I right? <laughs> But this is when Yeti officially joins the group and the girlies are in their fried blonde hair era, which to me is absolutely so iconic. They all look like little Barbie dolls. But these outfits actually scratch that the entire concept, like the entire track just really felt kind of half-assed. The concept and the theme of it just really wasn't very well defined and the only fits that we really got were these like black and white fits with like poofy puffy white tops. It just doesn't do the song justice and I genuinely feel like their velvet sides really don't get fully fleshed out as full concepts until quite a few years later. Which sucks because I personally love their smoother velvet R&B type tracks. Like I really do like Automatic but I just feel like if they had like a good cohesive concept and fits, it would have made the track stand out that much more. As for a styling lesson that I've learned from like both Be Natural and Automatic is that just because it looks generally good on a model or like on a catalog might be okay, but if you don't put like your personal spin on it, it just becomes really easily forgettable. Like I'll be honest, happiness wasn't my favorite era for styling, but the dip dyed hair was pretty memorable at least. <laughs> Finally, we're starting to get outfits that are both individualistic and yet cohesive amongst all the members, but they focus much more on styling this time around, particularly with the blonde hair and particularly with like the different hairstyles they played with and like the fun fur coats with the LED lights. But to be fair, most of these outfits are fairly simple and straightforward, considering that most of them are really just like oversized sweatshirts with pleated skirts. Is this my favorite styling era? No, but I do think that this marks the start of them like starting to figure out what style works for them both as a group and as individuals. Reflecting on the outfits from this era, I think the biggest takeaway is that styling can do so much to help an outfit because again, the outfits alone, they're not particularly spectacular and they're not particularly unique, but the blonde, iconic, unforgettable. Like the girlies understood that they needed to serve a look and I appreciate them sacrificing the health of their hair for that. And that's also something that I like to remind myself when it comes to personal styling and personal wardrobe is that sometimes all you really need to do to make a fit work is to lean into the aesthetic, like play with your hair, play, play with your makeup, play with your accessories. It can really elevate what you already own and put a unique fun spin on it. We have oversized hair bows, colorful one leg tights, doll outfits with aprons. This era was incredibly chaotic fashion wise, but I also really loved it. It was incredibly memorable, vibrant, and distinct. Honestly, this era feels like the predecessor for the colorful red tight trend going on right now. <laughs> I really appreciate this era because I feel like this was the first era the stylist like really committed to the theme, like really committed to the aesthetic. And they went for memorable, iconic, and like send a message about who these girls are. They're quirky, they're bold, and in this particular concept, they're pippy long stocking mannequins. I understand that this is not everyone's cup of tea, and like I also remember at the time when they wore those like cut up jeans with the one leg tights, people people absolutely hated it. But also that's a good lesson for personal style and just generally in life. You can put out what you believe will be loved and accepted by the masses, but there will always be somebody that hates what you're doing, hates what you're wearing, hates you for whatever reason. So you might as well have fun and be true to yourself. I know it sounds corny, but be bold, be fearless, and be 
unapologetically you. I honestly really love it when Red Velvet does more experimental, like pushing the boundaries on fashion and styling and in concept, because it's like no one else except for them could have done that. And that's honestly how you should feel about yourself. Styling wise, I don't really have much to say about this era that I haven't already regarding their velvet side tracks particularly, which means it's generally just not super cohesive or memorable and it doesn't ever really seem to relate to the song a lot. Like I'm just a little confused on the messaging. The light colored ponchos with like the ribbon details are pretty cute though, like I would definitely wear that. <laughs> and I guess that, that those outfits kind of make sense considering I'm pretty sure the lyrics of the song are based on a folktale from Chizok, which is a traditional Korean holiday that marks the transition from like the hot heat season to the wet season. Um, but I guess like ponchos make sense in that context. But other than that, the outfits were just a bit confusing. <laughs> Honestly, this era feels like an improved version of the happiness era outfits. Since again, we have these like really cutesy, girly, sporty looks, which means they're all ready at a moment's notice to sabotage each other. <laughs> Again, I feel like this era is really proving that outfits that are pretty simple and straightforward can look very nice, very unique with the right styling around it, which is again something that I myself am further trying to incorporate in the way that I dress. I absolutely love that each member had like a different vibrant hair color. I'm not gonna lie, I definitely dyed my own hair purple when I saw Irene's hair was purple, so like that's so cool. <laughs> and it was like definitely one of my favorite hair colors I've ever done. The small details from like the hair color to the hair styling to the jewelry and the different sock colors are like what differentiate each member. And I love that concept in fashion and styling because to me, it just shows how versatile the same clothes can be over and over again without having to like purchase an entirely new wardrobe. I am personally convinced that if you hate Rookie, you hate fun. Rookie is just like quintessential bubblegum k-pop in my mind, which I totally understand is not everyone's cup of tea, but the girls that get it, get it. This was such a fun era, both in the song and in the styling. The poofy blue baby doll dresses were adorable. The red dresses with the scallop sides were super funky, and we got an amazing Gucci moment from Irene. But honestly, my favorite were those vinyl polka dot purple skirt. As someone who is like really trying to curate and figure out my personal style, I found that one of the easiest ways for me to experiment with clothing is to understand silhouettes and fits that I already personally like on myself and then explore it via like different textures, different materials, different colors. So personally, I love the idea of this vinyl skirt because we have seen that skater skirt, pleated skirt silhouette on these girls time and time and time again, but this is a new way to sort of make it refreshing and new and distinct and memorable and all you had to do was change up the material of the skirt itself. Like for me personally, I love turtlenecks because I think these just have so much versatility as layering pieces. I have been getting turtlenecks in different colors with different patterns and different textures like lace. And honestly, it's done a lot to increase the versatility of my wardrobe and increase my options in my wardrobe. They're bright, summery, and poppy. The little sailor outfits were really cute. And I thought it was really fun that each member had like a fruit assigned to them. I'm not gonna lie, I was really confused as to why Wendy was being represented by a blue orange. <laughs> like why not just make her a blueberry? There wasn't a particular fit or like a group fit that really stood out to me in this era, except for Irene's watermelon look. Like that was just adorable. Personally, I just, I hate, hate those platform shoes that were so popular in K-pop at the time. Like I hated them then when, it, when I first saw it and I still hate them now. And it's just like, it's just a personal thing. Like, but I feel like the shoes really ruin it for me. And see, that's like the other thing that I, I'm like taking away regarding styling and fashion and I'm learning from Red Velvet is that like those accessories can really either make or break your outfit. But again, like everyone has different tastes in 
personal style and fashion and in your wardrobe. So if you like it, more power to you, but I just personally feel like the silhouette of the shoes just they don't do anything for the outfits except detract from them because the shoes are so blocky in both color and silhouette that it actually feels like the focal point of a lot of their outfits. Like my eyes immediately go to the shoes, but it's not a good one. <laughs> like I think except for Sugi because she had these like strappy shoes that are like tie up shoes that kind of look like the Miu Miu ballet flats and they might be Miu Miu ballet flats. They kind of look like it. I can't tell for sure, but I actually really like those shoes. But those platform sandals right next to them just make them even worse <laughs> to me. And so again, it's just my opinion. They're just really not my favorite type of shoes. And for me, it really detracts from the rest of the outfits that I can't even focus on them. <laughs> The red crowns, thigh-high boots, the rainbow dress, the end of the pizza guy. What is not to love about this entire track and concept? Those rainbow dresses, particularly Joy's, iconic. To me, this was like finally a perfect mix between their red and velvet sides. These outfits are still so cute and honestly like five, six years later, because I can't believe it's been that amount of time since this came out, but <laughs> I'd still wear like any and all of these outfits. The thing that I think they did super right with this track styling was that they're finally playing with textures and particularly mixing textures. We saw so much velvet, sequin, lace, mesh, satin, and other materials that there was always something to like catch your eye. I loved the effect of like the sequins against crushed velvet or like the sequins against lace or like the metallic gloves against like a suede velvet <laughs> jumpsuit um or like a velvet glove against a metallic dress and you know i just feel like these outfits were so memorable distinct and it actually really tells a story about both the group and as individuals like it feels simultaneously cohesive and yet individual to me like joy really shines through as this like sexy dominating woman and Sugi got those like blunt bangs. I have never seen blunt bangs look so good on someone. <laughs> and it just really leans into her like darker, cool girl, like artsy girl aesthetic. And I'm, I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed. Finally, their velvet tracks get so much justice. We've got fishnet, chokers, leather, harnesses, chains, furs, velvet, silk, mesh, sexy pointed toe heels. Like, I love it. Like, not only do they look good and like a full thought out concept and aesthetic, but they're also comfortable. This was also the era of those iconic red pants on Sugi. I love them still so much to this day and I genuinely want a pair for myself. This is the first era where it feels like, okay, now we know the members individually. We know them also as a group and let's like fully flesh out the concept and the aesthetic. And I think they did a really great job, mostly through accessorizing and playing with different silhouettes. Like I just just personally like how they you know they have just like their basic outfits that are really good the great like starting points but then it was really the accessorizing and the playing with the hair and the makeup and like the the layers like that it really did it for me that's something that i feel like i've been working on too in my personal style and in my personal wardrobe is that i feel like there's always that difference between like wearing your clothes versus letting your clothes wear you and this is like the first velvet track where they've been styled where it genuinely feels like they're wearing the clothes not the clothes wearing them So Power Up and Red Flavor were really similar in like sound and concept to me, but I always think of Power Up as the better like fashion moment. They did those fun like Girl Scout uniforms. Underneath the sashes, it's an outfit that we have seen on them many times, which is again to say like a basic top and a pleated skirt. But I feel like the embellishments really helped to make this era distinct and memorable and like very specific to this era. We also got rid of those damn platform sandal shoes and we finally got our girls in really interesting, nice heels. I like the styling better on Power Up because of like, you know, for instance, the pointed toe heels. Like previously what I've said is that 
a lot of their outfits, they were so focused on creating cohesion that they literally just copy pasted the same outfit on every member. Whereas instead here, there was a bit more intention and like purpose done with it in which they are matching and they are cohesive, but it doesn't mean that every single member needs to wear the exact same thing. Like I think that this uh, era really solidified that I really do enjoy juxtaposition just because I think that I, I really liked like the Girl Scout type outfits and the really girly feminine silhouettes, but I liked how they introduced uh, texture via and the embellishments and like the badges and stuff. And also with like these hot, sleek, mature shoes. To this day, I am very confused as to why they would release this song a month after Halloween. Considering like literally the promotional image have like Halloween <laughs> written in the back. The whole concept to me was just a bit confusing. Like I know previously I said that, you know, I'm a big proponent of mixing textures and materials. But if I'm being really honest, I do not like most of these looks. Like for instance, looking at Joy in the Halloween image, she looks like a pop diva in that glittery set with the velvet gloves, but then like right next to her, we have Yeti in a neon green bralette under a black mesh shirt um, with like a cheetah print skirt. And like, if you like that and you want to confuse people with your outfits, more power to you and maybe you should really refer to these outfits. <laughs> but in my personal opinion, it just kind of feels like the outfits were chosen in the complete dark at random, which doesn't mean that there aren't like specific items that I think are great or even Maybe I would go so far as to say like individual outfits. Also, just a personal thing yet again, I have never been a fan of animal print and there was just so much animal print this time around. And also like the Nike swoosh logo on Yeti's uh, bralette is just not my favorite. Like I am just personally not a fan of logo mania. So I don't like it when logos are advertised or like brand names are advertised all over a garment just because I don't find it particularly interesting. Like sometimes it can be done well and sometimes it can look like a whole pattern on its own but when it's just very obviously the brand name or the brand symbol or whatever it just to me it's just not that interesting i also recognize that patterns and prints tend to be those things that like people either love or hate and in this comeback you know they just use a lot of prints and patterns that i just personally don't like this track styling like to me just really solidified that there are just some prints and patterns, even if they're trendy at the moment, I won't buy into. Maybe if my personal taste changed like 10 years down the line or something, but like currently it is a no from me. I mean, to be very fair, prints and patterns that I like may not be liked by you. So it's just generally a personal thing, I think. Yeah. At the time, I was really defensive of it because I was like, oh, the song is like super chaotic and so the styling is too. But I, I just, I, reflecting on it, I really don't think it works. Like the thing is, is I understand that the album and the theme of the, the song and the tracks and whatnot are supposed to be this festival theme and carnival theme. And I just don't know if I'm getting celebration from these outfits. I just think that the last couple of tracks, like from Really Bad Boy and Zinzilla Beam, they're kind of, to me, instances of like, you have to know the rules to know how to break them. So like, I can kind of see what they're trying to do. I can see what they're trying to get at. And I appreciate that, you know, they're really trying to make experimental looks and push on some boundaries. But there's just something that I feel like is not being understood to begin with that just throws off all the looks. And it sucks because I actually really love seeing sort of unorthodox fits on fashion forward individuals because to me it can be really inspiring and it can be really new and unique and like it can really inspire you know me playing with silhouettes in my own wardrobe and in my own closet there just seems to be a general lack of curation of the fits from Really Bad Boy and Zinzella Beam. And I think I'm learning through analyzing all of these outfits that I'm a big fan of curated outfits. You know, some people like to just put random things together. They like to, you know, just play with their outfits and that's totally fine and that's totally fun. So again, I think it's just fun and important to analyze why or why not we like certain fits or really anything in life because critical thinking is very important. However, I will say that there's one fit that I actually did kind of like. It was this one from Yeti because I feel like this is genuinely giving off those like quirky fashion artsy it girl vibes. And I think it's because like I like how the silhouette forms 
with the big bustle, I don't know if that's right, but like, you know, like the interesting hemline silhouette on the dress with this like big, powerful shoulder pad blazer situation on top. And the bow tool like headpiece was also a nice, nice addition. Again, we're getting these light, summery, bright looks. While these outfits for the most part are okay, the styling this time around just felt a little underwhelming. I actually really quite liked the checkered print dresses with like the scallop hem and like cutout edges, but it kind of got marred by the whole plagiarism allegation, which I think SM Entertainment did reach a settlement with the original designer of the dresses. Otherwise, I don't know, sometimes the styling just kind of felt random at times. Like in the all pink outfits, I really kind of wish that they would have leaned into the cowboy aesthetic even more because like I, I kind of really like Suki's outfit. But on the other hand, it felt like they were trying to go for like 70s inspired looks for the actual stage outfits. But again, they just fall flat and they feel boring to me. Um, it just felt like little to no thought into actually like curating the style, like the entire outfit as a whole. Like you got good garments or like maybe you have good starting pieces, but like you gotta, you gotta put them all together. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, like styling and accessories and stuff are like spices. Like you gotta, you gotta put in a little spice here. Like I'm, I'm looking at this compilation of outfits from Just Yeti alone. And I'm like, yeah, these outfits are cute. Like I I would wear them on a Tuesday, you know? Um, but like, I'm a nobody on a Tuesday, whereas they are global K-pop sensations dominating a stage. I will say though that my absolute favorite looks from these, from this era are these encore stage raincoats. <laughs> like they're really cute. They're fresh, they're vibrant, they tie in with the music video and they're really fun. I like telling a story and like, I like conveying who I am through my outfits. And so I like it when there is intention in curating an outfit. Like every piece should be purposeful or sentimental, at least the way that I like things styled. I'm genuinely still so upset about Wendy's injury during this era because oh my god, the girls were serving looks, finally! The darker feminine aesthetic is so good to them. They look powerful, sexy, it matches the vibe of the song. Even their makeup is absolutely phenomenal. And I'm not a makeup girly, but the darker smudged liner with like the dark vampy lips and the glittered tears, like, oh, oh my god. The outfits also feel really complementary to like one another, so it feels really cohesive, even though like you can see individualistic spins on each member's outfit. I love Joy's like lacy collar detail here. I think it really helps to like highlight her face. In fact, I just love all of the like huge crystallized necklaces because I think that particularly against the all black, all dark outfits, it really just helps to like highlight and make the members' faces stand out. And I think Sergi is also wearing an Alexander McQueen corset over her lace dress. And yes, like I am so obsessed with juxtaposition that I love, I love, 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 love seeing pairing these feminine details with more masculine details. They just, they fully committed to the dark feminine aesthetic this time and I love it. I'm inspired by it. I want to dress like it. Like, like I, I really genuinely wish we had gotten more stage outfits from this era because I feel like this styling was it. I wasn't a big fan of the Oompa Oompa all denim outfits, but I actually really like how they did the denim outfits for the Queendom stages because to me they're way more stylized and with the contrast of denim shades, the fits don't look as flat as they did in Oompa Oompa. Those purple and black tulle skirts that they're wearing are super great. I think it allows for really great movement uh, to be showcased during their choreography. There was sparkle, but it wasn't super overwhelming. Plus, they were like properly accessorized this time. Irene's headpiece also I think is a really great addition to her fit. Sergi's dress has like this great embellished corset detail. Joy has a purple tulle skirt instead of a black one like all the other girls, but it doesn't feel like it stands out too much. It just gives like a good a different visual interest. But you know, in general, I also really liked their little seance outfits. <laughs> it felt very curated for each member. No. 
just yes are you kidding me i want every single piece that every member wore in this era <laughs> they look like absolutely perfect little ballerina figurines and the references to art history like even the casual pink and blue outfits were adorable they were memorable they were cute they were cohesive they were all the fun things that i love in a good outfit they're accessorizing their hair with like pearls and bows and other embellishments they're giving you range with like soft more feminine outfits um, and then darker outfits still absolutely shine in their own right. They look like art pieces, honestly, and their outfits send such a like clear message about the song, the group, the individuals, the theme. Like these outfits are intentional, they're curated, and they're cohesive. That white dress with the black corset combo absolutely lives rent free in my mind. And I too have worn a similar outfit because I love it so much. The prints on their darker outfits just look like paintings, like their clothes look like art pieces. I love it. And I just need to take a moment to appreciate these shoes. They're gorgeous. Like my favorite are those pearl heels. Like, oh, like I know they're probably not gonna be dancing and performing in them, but like for photo shoots and stuff, perfect, perfect, perfect. I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion, but I actually really liked birthday styling. It felt casual, but also cool. Like this to me, feels like what they were almost trying to do with like Zinzilla Beam and Really Bad Boy, but like curated, like they edited it. They ed- they edited it. It's not a grand look like Psycho or Feel My Rhythm, but I think the styling is still really solid. It feels youthful and fun, but curated. With Really Bad Boy and Zinzilla Beam, they used so many prints that I just personally don't like, and it, for me it like solidified like, oh, I really don't like those prints and I don't like those patterns. But I don't like camo print, but I really like their camo print looks. Honestly, I also just really love the little bear keychain attachments that they have on their belts. Like I want to crochet one and wear it on me all the time, like a little, little built-in friend. And like, I don't know. So to me, like this is ins inspirational in the fact that like they used a print that I don't normally like and they made me like it. Also, I quite liked the sprinkles outfits because to me it was very like theme. It was birthday cake sprinkles galore. And I really like how each member had a bit of those sparkles or sprinkles, sprinkles. <laughs> um, but it's not like overpowering any individual look and it actually feels quite cohesive and complimentary and like purposeful, um, put all together. Again, I think I'm just figuring out that I really like it when there is intention and purpose when curating an outfit even if you're using prints and patterns that i don't generally like like i i really like those camouflage okay so i also wanted to mention just a couple of subunits slash solos that are just like honorable mentions to me so the first solo i want to recognize is hello from joy i love the y2k moments and that granny square bolero also i love it i kind of want to recreate it but like weaving in those ends just seems like an absolute nightmare. <laughs> okay, Monster slash like the Naughty Era from Irene and Sugi. It's so incredibly hot. Like I can't, I, I can't, but I'm honestly just speechless. Like I just want to see more fits like this. And lastly, 28 Reasons from Sugi. At this point, I'm just fully convinced that there are different stylists for them as individuals versus as a group because these solos and subunits are so well styled. I genuinely think my heart skipped a beat or two when I first saw Sugi's solo. Also, the crochet, I think gloves and top with like the plaid skirt, I want to recreate it so bad. She looks so good. I'm not over it. Overall, I feel like the main takeaways for me are that I enjoy uniqueness, but it has to be done intentionally and it has to be curated. Outfits that I like tend to convey strong messages about the individual or the group or the song. Also, just anything with like a good juxtaposition. I'm really particular when it comes to prints and patterns, and while there are patterns and prints that I sort of traditionally don't like, if it's done well, like in birthday, I actually end up really liking it. I also really just generally enjoy this mixing of textures and materials and like different types of fabrics. I'm a huge fan of accessorizing and styling because I feel like it always makes the outfit look 
and feel more complete. Also, sometimes they can break them, AKA flat form shoes. <laughs> I hope you learned something about yourself and your personal tastes on this wild journey because you might completely disagree with me and that's completely valid. Let me know if you enjoyed this video and let me know if this is a series you'd be interested in seeing. I absolutely love pulling style inspiration from all types of media that I consume and I'm just a huge K-pop girl group stan so I just really wanted to nerd out about one of my favorite girl groups and I am so excited for their world tour. Like they need to announce their stops now. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments or by giving this video a like. If you disagree with me, let's talk about it. I love learning new things and new perspectives. So maybe I'll change my mind about some of these outfits. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more content. Check out some of my other videos while you're here. And I hope you're having a good day. Bye!